Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Before I get into today's show, uh, normally there's an audio version of this podcast and then a video version. Well, today is not one of those times. It is an audio only version because uh, when we started, when we were about to do this interview, we had the video set up, we were ready to go. And uh, luckily, I, I record all of these episodes like I'll stream to a private server the video and I'll record externally on an audio a digital audio recorder and I do that in case something like this happens and what happened was is we got the video call ready we were about to go and then blink all of a sudden the window was gone it like not one of those things where I lost the connection it was just the browser window closed like just disappeared so I hurried to get the video back up and start the interview again because we were just about to start and of course both of us were like that was weird so it was like all right let's let's get started and we did and it didn't occur to me until after the episode was done that I needed to reconnect the video because it disappeared I was just so very hurriedly trying to get the the link back up so we could start the interview so there's no video for this is what I'm getting at. But but there is audio and that's the that's why I do multiple connections in different places. So the audio was recorded, but if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, yes, it's just an audio version of the episode. So anyway, I just thought I'd explain that. But today I talked to an artist here in Madison by the name of Sierra Nash. Sierra is someone that I contacted through Instagram who I've been following a while, lives here in town and she is an expressionist. She's done murals. She is also a graphic designer. We talk about how Sierra gets some of the jobs uh, designing logos and also uh, when uh, how that ended up with Sierra going into studying art therapy, working with kids, trying to find a way to help people through art and expression. And also uh, Sierra hosts paint and sips and started doing them online once the pandemic hit. So we talk about all of those different things that Sierra does. Fantastic person. I was so happy to meet her. Uh, before I forget, if this is the first time you're hearing this show, go to my website, tomraiswebsite.com, and you can check out more podcast episodes. Also, you can see my daily vlog where I talk about things that I collect. I collect retro and vintage items and sell them to help support what I do, and also because I love doing it. So go to tomraiswebsite.com. Anyway, here's my interview with Sierra Nash on this art podcast starting right now. Dara Nash, I'm a expressionist graphic designer. You're located here. Are you from Madison? Yeah, I grew up here. Oh, you did? What side of town? Uh, east side. Oh, same here. Okay, yeah. nice. So on your uh, your bio, it says that you also do... This is one I actually want to ask you about first, because I'm very curious about it. Um, art therapy. So t it yeah. says that you do art therapy, and you're actually going... Or you went to school for that. Like I went to school. So I have... I um, earned my undergrad in um, art therapy. And in order for me to actually proceed and actually do art therapy... Um, I would have to get my master's first. So um, that actually got put on hold because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm going to have to like sit back and r relax and wait to the next episode <laughs> 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 and see where I can go for school and get that all figured out. But and so what does art therapy, like what is, are there different levels of it? Is it just like, explain art therapy to me. I guess I have a generalization of what I think it is, but since you actually went to school for it, like how would you, how would you describe it to someone? So, I mean, I guess it's, I would say it's fine, but for me to put it in a more like simpler um, way, it kind of like helps with like mental health, if you will. So mm -hmm. it's like, it, kind of helps people speak for themselves um, by making art. So it's like different processes that kind of just helps us as a, if, if I was a therapist, I'm not right now, but like just kind of help us understand what people are going through, kind of understand what they've gone through. So like, it's really good. It's a good type of therapy for those who are like dealing with traumatic events. So like vets or like people who've gone through like, um, issues with like um, 
trauma, like just different types of trauma. How about that? Yeah, like yeah. different types of trauma. So it's just kind of like how I describe it, it kind of like decodes and kind of like allows people to kind of like release that in a way, then ways that they can't describe or they don't feel comfortable describing or talking about in any other like therapy session. Just kind of like does that for them like the art doesn't have to be perfect it's just kind of like people putting the image in you know that's in their mind on paper or through a different type of art you know it could be mm -hmm. like um with different type of media like it could be with fabric it could be with um even building like a uh, sculpture or like clay it can just be different different things so Wow. So how did you decide to go into that? Like that's, you start out like doing art in high school and go, deciding to go into therapy for, for art. Like how does that transaction well, For happen? me, it started out, I wanted to go to school uh, for graphic design and then um, that ended up not going so well. So like I ended up going to MATC and I took a psych class and we we're learning about different types of therapies. And like, I, before even like going to their class, I was like sitting and thinking to myself, like, I want to do something other than like, I don't know, graphic design. Like I want to do art. Like I want to, mm -hmm. this is what my, I want my life to be. Like I want to be an artist, but I want to like help people like, you know? So then I came across art therapy. I'm like, this is perfect. Like art has always been like a go-to thing for me. Like it has helped me with my like issues, kind of like, you know, put me at ease, you know, like yeah. I was a child that didn't talk. I was super quiet. I didn't tell anybody anything really? like, no, <laughs> huh. which I kind of regret, like, um, but it kind of just, I don't know, kind of put me in my own little world. Why was graphic design not working out for you? What was, it? um, it, I was, uh, originally going to go to school to, uh, to my ed, but it was just like very costly. So I'm like, you know, I don't know. Let me try going here first mm -hmm. to MATC and then. No, I, I can relate. I when I, out of high school. I was supposed to go to the um, Chicago School of Art and Design, or I think that's what it's called. God, now I don't even remember. And I ended up just, you know, just decided to drop out of school and do other things which was not smart on my end either. So I can, <laughs> I can it's one of those things where it's like, I have no real excuse for it. For some reason, it seemed like it was just the thing at the time. I don't know. But yeah, it, I, it, it, was, it was a real struggle being at MATC. Yeah. I, yeah. I made it hard for myself because I didn't want to be there. <laughs> like, yeah. But I mean, I made, it, I made it out. I ended up transferring. So. Okay. But. And just yeah. like you didn't want to go to school or. No, what I just didn't want to go there. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So it was that you knew that you could have went somewhere else, but you, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. I, that makes sense. Like, oh, I'm here. Right. But I tried to make the best of it, but it was just like the feeling of still being at home and then you're seeing people from high school. So it's kind of still feels like you're at high you know, in high school and it's just like, that's the last thing you want to feel. That's actually <laughs> a really good point. <laughs> that didn't occur to me. I see exactly what you mean. That makes yeah. total sense. Um, how, how did you start? Like what, what kind of background was your artwork? Like, were you doing, cause you did graphic design, which mostly is computers now, but like, yeah. were, like painting and like, what other kind of mediums were you working in? I'm really into collage work. Um, really? I even, like, yeah, I've been like doing that while doing like graphic design, like some of my pieces from school, like I'm doing a lot of like stacking and like different, like. I don't just putting things together. I like meshing things together. It's really, it's really fun, but I haven't even done a lot of collage work lately, but okay. yeah, it's really fun. I'm actually fascinated by collage because it's one of those things that I wish I could do, but I just can't wrap my head around it. Like, how did you get started doing that? I don't know. One day I was just like, I want to make a collage. And <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, a few magazines that I had laying around my house. Um, this one that I made and I think it gets, uh, I don't know. I won't say, I don't know if it's good or not. Cause I don't really know how to determine good collage art. Like, I don't know what that is, but what I did in this piece in particular, um, it's, I found, I got lucky and found magazine clippings with, um, dates of like the, um, civil rights movement and like current, 
um, well, at the time, what was current um, now with, like, protests and, like, just all that. Just kind of, like, put that on one, like, cardboard piece, and I just started, like, gluing. And then I found, like, black models and um, black entrepreneurs, and I just kind of, like, put it on one small piece of cardboard, and it's just, like, to me right now, it looks like a like a big – how can I describe this? Like, I should say mesh, like a big um, bowl of like black history. But okay. like, if I could add on more, like what's going on now, I would, but it's just like, I feel like it still speaks what's happening today. So, yeah. How long did it take you to, to make it? Uh, it. <laughs> the, <laughs> That's your reaction. The fact that it's like really small, though, um, it, it took some time. I took, I took breaks. Yeah. I'm like, it's cutting. I, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the gluing. But yeah, um, it's one of my favorite pieces that I worked on. But Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen so many different types of collage art that, I mean, just thinking of how to layer the shapes and how to make, you know, thinking ahead of time, it's not necessarily, or at least in my own understanding, because like I said, I don't get it that much and I wish I did. But like, even if you're taking the things that you cut out and eventually going to, even though they're different pieces from farther away, it looks like it makes a shape. And I don't know how to map those out or I don't know. It's, but I really love it when I see it, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, but I just can't do it. Or maybe I just haven't spent enough time on it. I don't know. Here I am just trying to talk myself into doing one again. <laughs> I mean, I would try it. I mean, I think it's something that you really don't have to think too hard on, but yeah. like if you do it. It's just like bros again. Oh, maybe I will. <laughs> so um, now the other thing too is uh, I've noticed that you have, and I, I'm really interested in this because I also have this set up on mine, but it's just for the podcast, but you have booking appointments set up on your Facebook page. Yeah. And w so how has that been going? I'm very curious, like how people have been I, adjusting I to the pandemic been, here. Like figured out, like, I mean, people have used it. They've booked with me before, but like, I guess it's, I, I don't know. It's really kind of like hard to, you know, work with and like maneuver. Cause like, I don't know. I'm so used to people like messaging me like, Hey, can I um, do this with you? So I don't, I don't know. How do you find people to do that? I guess that would be now, even with the just only, either method, only, you know, only like two people have actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's not but bad. That's still more than I've done. Other than that, like people just go out their way and like message me. That's really cool. What do you do when you guys set this up? I see that the choices that you have are, um, you have graphic design or logo, yeah. logo graphic design yeah. and other, like other things. Like what have you, what have you done when you've done these booking events? Um, people have honestly have only come to me about logos so far um as far as like booking with me um other than that like the other stuff that i offer um people have just messaged me so like i do um paint parties yeah i saw that yeah, yeah. so like people um message me that way but as far as like the booking on my page they don't really like use that option but yeah they'll message me so which yeah. is it's fine it's fine but <laughs> I feel like the booking will kind of help me schedule better. You know, I also have a website and I can't really like book on there yet either. Yeah. And I saw you have, have it on there. It's uh the website you have, it's, it's a GoDaddy website, right? Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't know that it had booking. So is that connected with your, your Facebook booking or. Um, I'm not even sure. Like I've been trying to like have it connect with my Facebook, but uh -huh. I don't know. I kind of still feel like I need to tweak my website a little bit. So like once I'm done, I'll figure that out. Well, and I'm, I'm just really impressed that you're trying to do that. Like I haven't figured out how to do it yet either. So I've always had to keep sending people there or just having the link directly to it. But I was just wondering if maybe you knew something that I didn't and you had it like all set up because I didn't click on the book it now on your site. Yeah. Uh, it's, and I was curious to see how you got that set up. So now, now going to these, uh, you do a thing that's called paint and sip. Yep. And you used to do them in public. So first of all, tell me about how you used to do those in public. So, um, one, wine is involved. So that makes people want to come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I won't say I do it differently than others because I've never been to anyone else's but mine, but I would love to go to others. Um, 
but I kind of reel in art therapy a little bit with mine. Like I have a painting ready to go and people to like to work on, but I always tell them, do this for you. Do not like, you know, do the exact thing that I'm doing. Like, this is for you. Um, this is about you. Like you're here, like do whatever you want to the piece, add whatever you want. That's, that's how I go about it. And they have fun. I usually have food. So great. It's a good time. Wow, that seems like a lot of prep to do. Like, how did you get started or even come up with the idea of doing your own events like that? Um, I, well, someone in, like introduced like the whole paint party thing to me because yeah. I went to one in um, Chicago, which is very, very popular there. Okay. And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I should um, try it. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I ended up doing my first one. I believe it was in like 2018 and um, it was pretty fun. Um, I think the painting that I did at first was super complicated, but it worked out. How they so? Did a good job. Um, I don't know. I didn't realize that a lot of people don't actually know how to draw flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that was a thing because I just remember as a child, like, drawing flowers was a thing like everyone kind of knew how to do it and then or even like mixed colors like I, I didn't know that people just that just went away like, yeah I, I didn't realize that was a thing <laughs> 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 I didn't I, oh, but yeah I kind of after like doing that I realized you know like why don't you make a mixing chart like that's a good idea so you do that oh. like you know so yeah, but um, even before like my first couple ones, I kind of do a step-by-step drawing to get people in. Um, as of lately, I've kind of been like doing like a ready to paint type of thing because people get like self-conscious like, oh, well, I don't know how to do that. And it's just like, so that's not the point. The point is <laughs> to have fun, but yeah. yeah. And and you even, I saw that you are supplying people with kits even on these virtual ones that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You, I love how prepared you are when you, with yeah. these things. So what's, what's with the, what are you doing for the kits? So the kits, you're going to, they come with the, the ready to paint canvas. So like people are like ready to go. Uh-huh. And the reason why I do that is I notice like, even while you're on camera, like you can't, you can barely see what like people are drawing or writing like, oh, yeah. it, unless you have a marker. Mm-hmm. So like I kind of just have that ready and then I give them paints and brushes, um, a mixing guide because remember like people forget how to mix colors and yeah, um, I've been adding wine if it's like for like, you know, for adults. Um, Uh So yeah, and it just, they come and they sit on their computers or phones and they paint with me and we have a good time. The only thing that's like, missing with the virtual is like the music part i really love music i love playing music but it's like it's hard to play music over a computer so then sometimes it's just like this awkward silence like mm-hmm. everyone's so into their painting it's just like all you hear is everyone's microphone or like <laughs> right <laughs> well and also with the streaming services too sometimes what they do is if it's copyrighted music they will actually cut off the audio which yeah. i've had happen to me before <laughs> Yeah. And that's no I've, good. Yeah, but I've been doing them on like Google Meet, so so that's been that's been cool, but other than that, yeah, I can I can see that happening. Right. Oh, that I forgot that you were doing them on Google Meet. That's, yeah. Which is actually a very good service. It's actually really good for that. Like I prefer it to like Zoom and stuff. Plus Zoom, there's so many restrictions or you have to download something like Google Meet. Most of us have Gmail anyway. Mm-hmm. So you can just sign on for, with oh, that. Yeah, Google on there. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about the, uh, the, so what is the mixing, uh, chart mixing chart is, is yeah, like, what does that entail? What, how did you, how did you actually explain it or set it up for people to use? Um, I kind of just like did kind of like what you would see if you're in like kindergarten and you're learning how to like mix your colors. Okay. Kind of did like, okay, red and blue make purple. Uh-huh. Because, like I just, give out like the basic colors like you'll get red in the kit white yellow did i say red red I green, think so. <laughs> blue, and black uh-huh. and i just kind of take from those colors and tell them 
like what colors make what colors and like what you should use to make a lighter color or what you should use to, you know, make a darker color or, you know, Mm -hmm. I would be like, okay, use white if you want this to be darker or, you know, add a little black if you want this to, I mean, add white if you want this to be lighter and then add black if you want this to be darker. So. And do you have visuals with this or is it all just explained like in, in text? Um, It's, it's a visual. So I kind of just, did like blocks of colors. I went on Illustrator, made a nice little guide, and then I put the color wheel on the back too. So there's a color wheel, so they can look at that and see how. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow, you were so prepared. I love this. This yeah. <laughs> it's like you like think it through and stuff. That's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And, and then you also do the. You said you do the adult ones, but you started like. Have you always done the kids ones or? Um hopefully next month I'll do my first kid one. So. Oh, you haven't done one yet? No, I work with kids already. So I'm like, I might as well entertain them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On <the> days off, <laughs> which I think would be like a lot fun, more fun actually, just to, cause kids are like so engaged and they're like always ready to learn. And I've worked with a lot of creative kids. So where do you if, uh, work with them? If I might ask, um, red Caboose. Oh, you do? Okay. That place has been around for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? I've been working in childcare for about like six years now, and I've oh, wow. been with them for about three as of this year. So this is, yeah. That's really cool. And so how? So you're not able to actually, are you still, I guess what happened during the pandemic with daycare providers and things like that. I'm not really sure how that um, works. Cause there's some who like, they just really need the daycare providers. So yeah. how did that affect you? Um, during the first bit we were affected, we of course didn't get to work. Um, yeah. I'm, I do like the after school programming. So yeah, I was kind of like trying to find stuff to entertain kids or like entertain ourselves and like, yeah, you know, try to make money for work and, look up different stuff. And, um, we made it through the summer. We had our summer program and right now we're doing virtual learning and it's our last day. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you for making the time to talk with me. (laughs) Now I feel bad. (laughs) No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but yeah, it's our last day and doesn't feel like it feels like I'm going to be here tomorrow. Right. Yeah. But, it's been an experience, experience, honestly. Um, I'm kind of glad that I even like did it because now I feel like I have some type of experience on my belt, like totally oh, virtual learning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, but at the same time, it was actually good to actually be around kids because during the first couple like months during the lockdown, I was like, I want to go to work. Like I miss mm-hmm. the kids. It was, yeah. yeah. I know some people don't even say things like that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And yeah, it'll, it definitely will benefit for when you start doing the virtual classes with the kids for sure. Yeah. And, and knowing what to expect, like you actually had to talk with them if you were doing virtual learning. So you were actually making them do work. Whereas this is going to be more like doing art and having fun. So you, yeah. you get to learn the difficult part of it. Now you get to do the, Hey, let's paint things and goof around type thing. Well, yeah. Yeah, not necessarily goof around, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like being there with them, watching them uh, talk to their teachers who zoom, I'm the teacher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Now, you had talked before about uh, people asking you to do logos. And actually, uh, logos are w- another thing where I've just never really got into it. I don't know. It, I feel it's hard to come up with a logo for somebody. How do you, what's your, what's your method for like coming up with logos? It's, it, you know, and plus it's probably the most critical of designs because it's yeah. going to be the brand of the company. So tell me about making logos. <laughs> oh, okay. So I've, <laughs> I've had some experiences. Um I mean, yeah, you're right. It's it's very tough coming up for coming up with logos for people. Honestly, um, people usually come to me with their own ideas, which mm-hmm. I like. Um, but there's been some cases where I had to tell people, like, you know, less is more. Yeah. Because like they'll you know come to you and they'll like, 
oh, I want to have this on here and I want to have this. And it's just like people are going to try to figure out and code what this is because you just don't need all of that, you know? Right. Like you want people to be able to like see your logo and be like, hey, that's so-and-so's company or that's that. Like, you know, like instead of, oh, that looks familiar, but I don't really know where that's from or who that's for. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. And and the other thing too is it's going to be used in very small situations like uh it, like in the tab in the browser for a website and you have mm -hmm. to be able to just yeah i know and a business card and like yeah i there's uh some logos that are kind of popular right now it's like the cartoon logos of like actual people like it's oh. like a version of themselves yeah they're cute <laughs> <laughs> that was such a polite way to put that <laughs> but like i mean this is just my personal opinion i don't really know how like graphic design critics view this but i honestly i i don't really know how to go about it because i'm like well what do you do like they'll have like different objects floating around them and i'm like yeah you know that's mm -hmm. cute but there's also the the tough thing to go through as well is there are fads um, that logos and design will have over the years. Like it'll be something where one person did it and everybody's like, I want to have that. And then all of a sudden it becomes saturated and it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a music genre or mm -hmm. a one hit wonder where it's like, that's yeah. a really cool song. And if you start copying it, it's just going to be, it's going to die, you know, or, and then yeah. other people will still probably refer back to that one situation that it makes me think of is, uh, back when, uh, the iTunes player first came out and it had that thing where you could flip through the, I don't know if you remember this or not, but you could yeah. flip through like the CD covers. Yeah. On your, on the iPod. Yeah. 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 Every, when I was doing website design, every single website wanted that, but it was kind of like, but you have nothing to put in it. And they're like, but we want something that looks like that. And it's like, what are you going to put there? And it's like, we can put our photos there. Why? You know, <laughs> put them on your page where they belong. So it's, and you would have to just kind of have a discussion and it's, and it's tough because they're also the one paying you. And that's the worst part. Yeah. And like, they want what they want and then, you know, and say, valid, oh, you know, right. but it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But, it, and that's what you learn. I mean, eventually you just, it's, this is what I've learned from it is it's like, well, that's what they want. So that's what I'm going to give them. You know, it's their thing. And I do that. And it's like, why am I fighting with them about it? This isn't like when I walk away, I'm not going to be like, everybody knows this is my web. It's like, it's their website. It's what they want. So I just do it. You know, and that's what I have done. Plus, uh, you know, total truth be told, I've gotten three jobs for logo design and none of them got bought. So I've never successfully done logo design. That's the other reason why I was asking. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's really tough. I have more fun doing flyers and like, other things like that and like with logos it's just like i sometimes i don't even know where to begin like yeah no, it's, like, it's, it's tough ideas and like sometimes i don't even know what they want to do well, <laughs> <laughs> it's both of us because i don't i don't know because i think with me i just feel the pressure of like well you can't use that you can't have all of that like it has to just be like simple but when mm -hmm have to be simple it's like super hard because you're just like overthinking like maybe that's not <laughs> i don't know like, and that's sometimes what the designer is there for is to help them realize that like the, yeah. that's why they're not doing the logo themselves yeah so it it yeah it's and it's a conversation you know and that's it, it's tough sometimes to even if you know you've had the discussion and they still want it that way it's tough to let it go but it's yeah. like yeah you know at the end of the day, you get paid and that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had some cases where like, well, people were like, oh, well, I don't like that. So it's just like, you know, not going to pay you. And it's like, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Being a freelance, that's the toughest thing about also doing freelance work is being your own account manager. Yeah. That's rough. I hate that part. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I know you don't like it, but I worked on it for you. Yeah. But yeah. it's, it's not, if you get a job at say a convenience store or like a retail place, they don't go, you're going to work here and we'll decide what part of it we're going to pay you for. 
if, yeah. if we like that part. Like, even if you're standing around looking at your phone, they can fire you afterwards, but yeah. you still get paid for the day that you were there. You know? Right, you got fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, and that made me think when you were saying the flyers and stuff, I forgot that you also, uh, to add to all the things that you do, you're also a photographer. Yeah, a little bit. Some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't uh, taken any pictures in a while, but. Okay. You know, um, my grandmother kind of like influenced me. She was really, really big with her camera um, all the time. She did like a lot of photo shoots. Like every time we would be like with her during the summer, she would have her camera out, looking oh. away. <laughs> and did she tell you about what she, like, did she ever involve you in the process or you just knew that she had her camera with her or like, did you guys ever talk about, like, did she give you any tips is basically what I'm saying. I always knew. It was just this one summer where I just wasn't aware it was going to happen. Um, She dressed me and my sister up in like different uh, scarves and like sheets and she took pictures of us. Um, really? Actually like my favorite childhood pictures. Um, Yeah. She put jewels on us, like a little bit of lipstick and just like. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> She's really fun. But yeah. Wow. And and it turned out yeah, that's cause so she was just doing a thing and she's and you guys went along and now it's something later on that you can like totally appreciate. Like you know you, Yeah. Huh. I like that a lot. That's that's an awesome story. So do yeah. you, when you do photography, do you develop your own film or are you doing digital? Like how are you doing your photography? I do digital. So, okay. Yeah. I would too. I, yeah. I don't know enough about film. I used to watch somebody actually develop film and I was like, this seems horrible. Yeah. I did the black and white photo. Um, so like the dark room, I had experience with that in high school and that was like, it was fun, but I'm like, I don't know if I can do this Yeah. all the time. But I also, I also went to East. So like we're in the dark room and all I can think about is my <laughs> being there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. They could be in here. It's dark, but right. Of course, we would probably hear them too. But it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know why I'm thinking of mice in a room that I'm never going to be in. So, th yeah, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, what what other kind of stuff do you? I, I mean, with the new year coming and in, in the summer, making at least things somewhat more accessible. Like, what kind of plans do you have? at least artistically in the next year? I haven't, I've been thinking, but I don't think I've been thinking long enough to even think about the summer because last summer was just so chaotic. I just kind right. of feel like right now I'm just starting to actually like calm down from that. But I mean, I want to do more paint parties. Um, I've been kind of thinking of new ways to actually be creative through art. That's kind of been like, thing of mine maybe like I want to step away from painting and like I want to do more like 3d work like really yeah that's kind of been on my mind for some time just kind of like putting things together so what kind of 3d work I guess I'm curious what that means you're like 2d like just, just like more structural design like you know gluing things together just sawing things together. I don't know, using clay. I like, I like clay a lot. I kind of want to get better at using with ceramics. I think I suck. So I <laughs> I, that just adds to like the multitude of the different genres of artwork that I've been asking you about in this. And yeah. now you want to do like actually build things or make things. Yeah. I love that. It, wait, you just did um, a, uh, you, you just did a public setup in a church recently, didn't you? Yes, I did. That was very nerve wracking. <laughs> really? How come? Um, because I was talking about racism. So that's what my um, mural is about. Mm -hmm. And um, it triggered me a bit because I myself dealt with like ra racism at a young age. So um, I'm just speaking in front of these people. And like the mm -hmm. only person in the audience that's black is my mom. So it's just mm -hmm. like, I can't, I can't. It was like, it was really hard to like even begin to speak because like in my mind I'm just looking at the mural that I worked on I'm like freezing up and like yeah but um towards the end I got a little better with speaking and answering questions but like just to describe the process was really hard because while I was working on it I was like 
okay, when you talk about this part, this is what you're going to say. And mm-hmm. I even wrote, I wrote things down and still it was just like, I'm frozen. So yeah, I cried a bit, but oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but I ended up getting through it. They enjoyed it. So that was, they learned a lot from me. So that was good. But it, yeah. so it was a good experience at least. Yeah, it was. Good. I'm glad. It, it, how long did it take you to set it up? Like how, what was the whole process of putting this up and like even, cause man, on top of it, you, yeah, you had to give a speech about it and everything that's yeah. tough. So it, yeah, yeah. How, how, how long did it take you to do it? So I want to say it took me about like two months. Um, it was very, the canvases were like super long and like, I yeah don't have a lot of space where I do my artwork. So it was like a lot of like waiting for things to dry like constantly so I can like roll a part up and then work on this section. <laughs> a lot of like stopping and starting and yeah, it was, it was a lot, but I, like I said, like I got through it. Um, it's a three part mural. So that, so yeah, I, <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. And I um, used the scripture to um, incorporate the message mm-hmm. so that this um, church community alone could like understand where I was, you know, where I was, where I was coming from. Um, I used Genesis. I believe I start, started at chapter 33 and ended at 36 or 37. Okay. Did they ask you to make this or did you approach them? Like yeah, how did... I, was, I was asked. Okay. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, how, I mean, did they just know you from the church, or did how did no, they? No, um, they found me um, through Facebook. So they saw that the murals that I worked on uh, this summer, and they reached out to me. So yeah. it was cool, kind of like being able to like go to like a different town and kind of like share my art, since I've only been like sharing my art in Madison. Yeah, so it was different different approach, different energy. Cause it's, it was in Monroe. So mm-hmm. the church was in Monroe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and the, uh, you did the mural on state street outside of the ink place. I forget the full name. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. And that was with Synovia. Mm-hmm. So it was actually like the night before I feel like I was asked when they're just like, we want people to paint the boards. And I remember being tagged in a post like, Hey, do you guys know any, any of artists that would be interested in painting and then Brooklyn who we also worked with on the uh, mural um, she had a connection with um, muralist and she asked if we wanted to work with her so like we're just staying up pretty much not the whole night but we kind of just came up with a quick idea mm-hmm. that we put on the board and then we're out the next morning and then started painting but um, it was an experience I guess like the first day just out there painting there was a lot of compliments being made both good and bad but yes it was like towards the message not so much the art but it was just like what we're you know the message that we're we're like trying to share and people were just like nah really yeah just walking past and it's just like oh okay um (laughs) i don't i don't understand why it's i don't want to compare it to this but it's kind of like when you post something on the internet and people like who have no idea or just randomly came across it decide that they have to take the time to tell you that they don't like something. And it's like, what did you accomplish with that? Nothing. You know, exactly. I don't, I don't understand. And that happens a lot in, in, in different situations. And I don't understand the energy that's spent just to tell people that they don't like something. It's like, just if you don't like it, move on and figure out why you don't like it. I don't know. It's never mind. I'm not going to solve the world's problems. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that a lot on YouTube. Um, yeah, that, that's very true. Yes, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> that is YouTube. <laughs> like, why are you even watching? This? Exactly. Although I guess that's one of those I mean, things, though, too, where you also, if you get, if if you actually have advertising turned on for your channel, at least you still get the payment, even if it's a negative, like hate view. But YouTube gives people like the option to actually do that. So yeah. Yeah, that's very true, man. Okay. <laughs> and so with the, uh, now with that, you said you wanted to build some 3d stuff and yeah. 
I am curious, you said you're mulling it around in your head, but that means that you have an image in your head of something you want to try and you're still constructing yeah. it in your head. And I love that process of like going, maybe I could do this. And you're like, peace. And what, what, what do you have pieced together in your head so far? I want to try and get a visual in my mind of what you're thinking of as far as the, um, the building I'm, and stuff. I'm really big on shapes. Like I yeah. love, shapes. like I even like painting shapes. I was kind of like how like you can just put them together. It's just like, Oh, that looks cool. I yeah. mean, it may not be cool to everybody, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, maybe something with that. I even thought about taking a glass blowing class. Like, really? Yeah. That terrifies me, but I've always <laughs> wanted to do yeah, it. Yeah, like, I, I, it just kind of looks satisfying, but I'm like, ooh, I might burn myself. I don't know. Um, but I would definitely burn myself. There's, there's gloves, but <laughs> I suppose yeah, it's like, I mean somewhere in, in that nature just kind of like putting things together and just again working with shapes random designs like I feel like I'm a random person so like yeah just kind of like having like a nice flow I guess I get that that's cool. yeah I would there's a glass blow, blowing place uh, I can't say the word a glass blowing place there we go uh, right by uh, where my studio is over on the Near East side. And I went in there once during gallery night. Gallery night when you used to be able to walk around and just go into the different studios in different areas downtown. Like, have you ever actually gone to where they do glass blowing, or are you just kind of interested in doing it? I'm just interested. It's always been something that I've been interested in, but I always wanted to like take a friend and come with me. But I just, you know, I'm going to go by myself. <laughs> yeah. No, I like it. I love the fact that you you just think of something and you go do it. That's fantastic. That's yeah. And um, so, is there um, the one last thing I'd like to ask you is um, is there anything coming up or anything that you are going to be doing? Doesn't even have to do anything with what we're doing here uh, that you'd like to tell people about or just mention or anything I I may not have covered today that you'd like to tell people about. Um, I just did a paint night with Edgewood uh, last night. So. Oh. How did that go? That was that was cool. It went pretty fast. Um, we painted Africa, so it was their Black History Month. So that's what we worked on. But other than that, I don't think I have anything else coming up. <laughs> <laughs> if the if the kids virtual paint goes well, are you going to be doing a bunch of them? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. And if it doesn't, I'll try again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's no reason not to. I mean, yeah. not a million people aren't going to show up the first time they're going to show up over time because word yeah. will spread. Yep. That's exactly it. And then uh, if people wanted to check out your stuff, where should they uh, go and see it? Um, On Instagram. My Instagram is C Nash arts underscore. And then my website is C Nash arts, C Nash is arts.com. And then my Facebook is C Nash is arts. <laughs> So yeah, that's where you guys can check out my stuff. Great. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. It was great meeting you. Great meeting you too. You're welcome.